Right. Okay, um, I'm gonna mute you guys. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, I'm back. All right, welcome. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Uh, it is Thursday, September 8th. Um, beginning today, this week, we're moving our Bible study, our, our uh, Thor Connect to Thursday. So for the next couple of months, um, we're going to hold on our get together on Thursday. We're going to connect on Thursday. So I um, hope you can make the adjustment with you, with me. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. I'm a couple of minutes late. My apologies. I try to start on time. Um, welcome to all of you who have joined us via our conference call. God bless you. Thank God for you. Thank you so much for making the adjustment adjustment in your schedule to be with me tonight. Uh, I'm excited about what God is doing. He's doing some awesome, amazing things, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. So we're not going to tarry, as they used to say, too long, but we're going to get right to it. Is that all right? Uh, we'll have a word of prayer, and then we will uh, we'll get to it. Let's pray. Father, again, we just thank you for all that you are. You're awesome. You're amazing. You're all-knowing. You're compassionate. You're loving, caring, and kind. And we thank you for it. We thank you for this opportunity to come to so many homes, to touch so many lives. We thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Now, God, as we get into this word, we thank you that uh, that you'll illuminate my mind to receive straight from your lips what need to be said tonight. God, I thank you for it. I give you all the praise for it in Jesus' name. And I thank you that the word shall not return void, but it will accomplish uh, the purpose to which it was sent. All right, all right. God bless you. Thank God, Sandra. God bless you. Thank you for being with me tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Lynn, God bless you. Uh, we did not have noonday prayer yesterday. I had a few technical issues. I plan to have that worked out by next week. Uh, but thank you so much for being so kind and patient with me and adjusting your schedule. I'm very, very excited about that. Um, listen, if you are in town, if you're in Los Angeles, meet Bishop Gates. Meet me this Sunday at the Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Center located at 4305 Degden Boulevard right here in the city of Los Angeles uh, in the Lamert Park area right there in the Crenshaw District. Um, so join me this coming Sunday at three o'clock p.m. We're going to do some crazy praise. We're going to see what God says. Doris, how are you? God bless you. Renita, God bless you. Oh, God, you guys are blessing me. Thank you so much for being with me tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to get into it. Glad to be here. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, and a special shout out to Atlanta. I was in Atlanta this past weekend. Had an awesome time. Uh, participating in the consecration of Bishop Elena Thompson. It was an awesome, awesome weekend. God is doing some great things in the body of Christ. And I'm just glad to be a part of what God is doing. Well, how many of you, um, how many of you all um, put, uh, put some praise and some, uh, got into some praise and some worship this week? How many of you all uh, really just focused in on the goodness of God and uh, the power of God and the peace of God? Um, uh, let me send this message right, please, Dale. Okay. Thank you. 
Uh, Kia, I'm sending you a message. I need you to follow up with me on this. Okay. Ah. All right. Okay, we're going to get started. Uh, Minister Smith, God bless you. How are you? Uh, again, if you're on the conference call, I need you to mute your phone. Please, ma'am and please, sir. I need you to mute your phone. We're going to get started in a minute. We're going to get started in just a minute. We are going to get started in just a minute. All right. Okay. Hey, Tremisha. God bless you. Good to see you. Um, also, while I'm thinking about it, one of our minister designate uh, is going to be doing a short sermonette. Bakita, God bless you. Um, this coming Sunday, we're training our ministers and we are training our pastors. And so this coming Sunday at three o'clock, Minister Augustus, Minister Designate Augustus will be doing a sermonette. So come out and support her as uh, she prepares for uh, ministry and the call that's on her life. I really believe as a senior pastor and as a bishop, I really believe in training those who are called to ministry. I think I know that is a part of my job. And so I'm excited about having the opportunity to pour into the lives of those who have been called uh, to equip you for ministry. So this coming Sunday at three o'clock, uh, Minister Augustus, and I believe this will be her first time speaking. So uh, if you're in ministry in the, in the area, stop by and help me help support uh, this young lady who's preparing for ministry. All right, I think we're ready. I think we're ready. So, um, as I was stating a few minutes ago, how many of you um, have taken the challenge to um, just begin to praise and to uh, worship, sing praises and to worship? Um, uh, I don't know about you, but last week was probably the most challenging week in my life. And I'm going to be very honest with you about how my how my um my week was it was just very challenging i'm working on two major projects and it seemed like everything that could go wrong went wrong now, how many of you have ever been in a situation where everything that can go wrong goes wrong now uh, i'm still dealing with the subject matter earthquake the power within uh, and it's because I need to awaken something inside of you. I want to awaken the power of God that is laying dormant in your life. I want to awaken. I want to call some movement to happen with inside of you so that it will have a ripple effect and literally change things in around you, change uh, your world around you. Is that all right? And so our base scripture, and I think this is just a powerful scripture uh, because it just spells out the process or the formula or the procedure for getting things to move. Amen. How, a lot of times we try to physically force things to move. We try to physically manhandle, if you will, or girl handle, if you will, um, and, and force an issue or try to force things to happen, try to make things happen. And you, you use all your might and all your strength and all your uh, knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding all your know-how to try to move things in your life. How many of you have done that only to find out that at the end of the day, nothing moved and you are worn out, tired? Huh? Um, but everything seems to, going, seems to be going crazy. Oh my God, I remember, uh, again, I'm uh, Minister Designate Gates, God bless you. Um, 
And like I said, I'm working on these projects and it just seemed like, oh my God, everything, nothing happened right. We actually should have been out of one, uh, both jobs a week ago. But there were many, many, many challenges and it just seemed like the harder, watch this, the harder I worked and pushed and tried to maneuver things, the more difficult things got for me, the, the, the more backed up I got, if you will. And, um, but here's the interesting thing. I remembered the words that came out of my mouth regarding this very situation. And I thought about Paul and Silas. I said, well, D, you're not in chains. You're not uh, locked up in prison. I mean to tell you, out on Facebook, I was, people of God, listen, I was on the verge of tears. It, it, it just, I was, Reverend, Reverend Hughes, I was just hurting. Because I, I could not, I didn't see my way clear. I, I saw no clear pathway out of, mm, I just saw something. There was no clear pathway out of what I was in, but my moving forward, uh, persevering would create the pathway out of the situation. Did you hear what I said? I couldn't see a clear pathway, but my determination to move forward in and of itself would create automatically the pathway. Mm. If I had stopped, the pathway out of the situation would not manifest. Mm. So I, I was, oh, I was on the, vid, uh, the verge of tears. Um, uh, it was just, it was just, oh my God. But I remembered, I remembered the message. I remember the words that came out of my own mouth to praise. When you find yourself in a situation with your back against the wall, I, I envision Paul and Silas in prison, bound, singing and praising God. So what did I do? First of all, because my heart was involved, I, I, I was hurt in my heart. I, I, I was ashamed. I was, I was angry. I, I had all kinds of emotions going on. And I said, how can you muster up the strength, the energy, the courage to begin to praise and worship God in that type of environment internally. Mad, pissed off, angry, hurting, confused. Then you have the regret. I re Man, I should have just turned the job down. I should have done something else. I should have gone fishing or whatever. Then I thought about Paul and Silas and I said, what did they have in them that gave them the courage in the midst of their situation? What did they have? How were they able to turn off and focus on God? How were they able to shift past their anger and their frustration and having been beaten How and thrown in prison? How were they ever able to just go past that. Mm. It's, there's, it's nothing to it but to do it. So what did I start doing? I started singing. Uh, uh, Pastor Designate Gates, you might remember this. I just started singing, Hallelujah. Now, did I feel better? Not at all. Uh, hallelujah. I'm trying to adjust myself. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to feel better. Hallelujah. I, I had no choice because to murmur and complain would only make my situation worse. So I just begin to say, Lord, I love you. In the midst of my confusion, Lord, I love you. I just began to worship and magnify God and, and just give praise to his name. Ah, in spite of my circumstances. I probably mentioned this a while ago, but the circumstances are, are created to give you opportunity to do one or two things. You can either praise God and, and stay focused 
on who God is and stay uh, committed to your love for God. Or in that moment, in a moment like that, you'll just decide to just scratch it. Hmm? You'll, you'll decide to just fold your hands up and just call it quits. I can't hear nobody. But I begin to, as I'm driving throughout the city, I began to just give praise and, and to worship. But let me tell you, let me tell you, but there was a constant struggle uh, because my emotions, I still felt hurt. I still felt defeated. I, I still felt inadequate. I, I still felt incompetent. I still felt numb. I still felt disappointed and frustrated because I wanted everything to go smoothly. I wanted to, uh, everything to go well. I wanted everything to be perfect. Well, that is only uh, experienced in your mind because nothing is perfect, huh? Everything, but then again, depending on how you view it and understand it, even in the midst of the ups and downs, it is still perfect. Why? Because it is the perfect opportunity. Mm. Yes, when your back up is, a, uh, is against the wall and everything seems to be caving in on you and nothing seems to be working, you don't have enough money at the end of your pay period. I don't know about you, but I've had moments when I've gotten paid on Friday and by Monday I was broke. It doesn't seem to go as far as it used to go. It, it, nothing seems to be going right. But those situations, those situations, those situations, those situations as imperfect as they may appear and as uncomfortable as it is and as hmm, challenging as it is and as much as you and I dislike it, let the church say amen. As much as we dislike being in those situations, it is the perfect environment, Pierre, God bless you. It is the perfect environment. It is the perfect situation. Watch this. You're going to love this. It's the perfect setup. Mm -hmm. I said that. It's the perfect setup for something magical and miraculous to happen. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, Paul and Silas. Yes, the Bible says it is a good thing to uh, give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Paul and Silas, the Bible says, at midnight, at midnight, they prayed and sang praises. Mm -hmm. So your environment, whatever your situation is, honey, whatever, uh, however stressful it may seem, how uh, un, 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 um, what's the word? Um, um, unfair. It's it's unfair and it's not easy. No matter how uh, the situation presents itself, it is Reverend Yolanda Hughes. It is the perfect environment. It is the perfect setup. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is the perfect situation. Uh -huh. for uh, uh, something awesome, miraculous, and amazing to happen. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. It's, it's the perfect setup. It's the perfect opportunity, Diane. It's the perfect situation. See, when, when we look at, the Bible says, look not on things which are seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, meaning that they're subject to change. <laughs> and that's why sometimes we're flippy floppy because, yeah, today it's one way, tomorrow it's another way. Uh, and if you base your emotional temperament on how things appear, then you'll always be emotionally unbalanced. Mm -hmm. But he said, don't look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for they are eternal. Yeah, what you see with your natural eye will change. Your environment will change. Uh, this too shall pass. It will not always be the way it is now. But it's the perfect, and I need you to wrap your mind around what I'm saying. It's the perfect environment now, the enemy, the devil, your ego will tell you that it, this is just all wrong. It's not supposed to be happening. I should not be in this situation. You're going to love this part. I'm a child of God. Why is it so difficult? I'm, I'm the king's kid. Why am I uh, 
in such a predicament. I'm, uh, I've been faithful. I've been obedient to God. Why is the situation the way it is? Well, it's a setup. See, it's a setup. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a setup. An earthquake uh, is a, it is an earthquake is the shaking of the Earth's surface, resulting from a sudden release of energy. <laughs> so, in order for an earthquake to happen, it has to be there has to be a setup. Uh, there has to be a sudden amount of energy that is released that will cause the Earth to shift and so your environment as toxic toxic as it may seem as poisonous as it may appear as challenging as it may be Tremisha it is a setup mm. ah, the universe God uh -huh, is setting you up positioning you uh, to cause something to happen now the universe is setting you up so that there is an awakening. Uh -huh. the, the, the universe, God, is setting you up so that some things in your life can be shifted. I can't hear nobody. It's a setup. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm being set up. Mm -hmm. It's a setup. But if you uh, don't look at it uh, properly, you will uh, misread the signal. Mm -hmm. You'll misread the indicators. You won't, you won't, uh, you, you'll be, mis you'll miss a great opportunity. Watch this. That took a lifetime to set up. Mm -hmm. You'll miss an opportunity that took a lifetime to set up everything that you are experienced took a lifetime to set up. <laughs> Some people had to be born first before this situation would be the way it is. Mm -hmm. Some things had to happen. You had to go through some things, experience some things so that this environment that you're in would be the perfect in environment for something magical to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm preaching real good. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's a setup. Mm -hmm. It's a setup. The Bible says that Paul and Silas were in prison. It was at midnight. They were bound and it was dark. Uh -huh. Reverend Hughes, you're being set up. I, I know and I've been wanting to get to you and talk to you, uh, but at the right time it will happen. God is trying to shift some things in your life. God is trying to awaken, mm -hmm, I hear you Holy Spirit, some things in your life. God is trying to move some things in your life and, and the, 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 uh, the stage is set for something miraculous to happen. But I believe the keys, the keys to unleashing what is supposed to happen in your life is here in Acts 6, uh, Acts 16, 25, 26. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. It's a setup. Mm -hmm. It's a setup. It's a setup. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, it's a setup. I'm being set up. Mm -hmm. Not by man. Although man plays a part in it, mm -hmm. not by your brothers or your sisters, your wife, your husband, your spouse, your kids, your job, the environment, the weather. It's not any of those things. It is God using those things. Hear me good. Hear me good to set you up for something awesome. Mm -hmm. It was midnight. It was dark. I can imagine it was cold and damp. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was a five-star hotel. I think it was damp and humid and nasty. I can imagine rats and all kinds of creeping things uh, uh -huh, uh, cohabitating in the prison, in the jail with Paul and Silas. I can imagine uh, that they had gone days without eating. I can imagine that they were hungry and they were clearly separated from their families. Mm -hmm. It was ugly. It was a bad situation. Have you ever been in a bad situation? Mm -hmm. It was a bad situation. It was a bad situation. And 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 uh, they had an opportunity to do one, one or two things. But it was a setup. Hmm. Ha, ha, ha. It was a setup. It was a setup. Mm -hmm. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Mm -hmm. It wasn't high noon. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't three o'clock. It wasn't dawn. Uh -huh. 
uh, it was at midnight. It was dark and quiet and still. I'm sure they were lonely. I'm sure that they were probably confused. I'm sure that they were probably wondering what in the hell is going to happen next. But they did not allow the fact that it was midnight. They did not allow the fact that it was damp and cold. Ha! Ah, thank you, Jesus. They did not allow the fact that they were separated from their families, although those reasons would have been good enough reasons uh, to do something differently. There would have been good enough reasons to murmur and to complain. There would have been justifiable reasons to take issue with the jailer and those who put them in jail, but ultimately, God. I can't hear nobody. But it was midnight and they were alone and they were uh, not only in prison, but they were under the prison. They were in jail and they had a jailer watching them to make sure that they didn't move. It wasn't enough that they were inside of a jail, inside of a jail. It didn't, it didn't matter that they were chained, ah, but they were in prison and they praised. They prayed and sang praises unto God. Ah, if you need, and I'm talking to people tonight here, uh, yes, out here in Facebook and those who have called in on the conference line, you need, uh, how many of you need some things to happen? Ah, God is pressing against you. Watch this. Ah, the Spirit of God is pressing against you because he's trying to get something out of you because it is those things that he is trying to get out of you, that will be the keys. It will be the thing to release you. It will be the thing to awaken a power and energy that will shake the very foundation ah, of your life. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a setup. Mm -hmm. It's a setup. It's a, it's a setup. God is trying to get you to do something because ah, he wants to bless you. The Bible says they sang and they praised God. They sung praises unto the unto God, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. Hmm. Ah, so that the foundations of the prisons were open. Now I just thought about it; just hit my brain. I thought about another incident. I, I thought about another incident. I thought about another incident where there was an earthquake. But I want to. I want you to. Um, I want you to hear. I want you to remember and reflect. It was uh, back during the crucifixion of Jesus. It was after three hours. Uh, it, was, it was after three hours of darkness at midday. <laughs> it was dark at midday. Yeah, how many of you been in a situation where it should be bright and light? Uh, you might be in your golden years. You might be in your senior years. You might be in the prime of your life. You might be at the at the pinnacle of your life. You might be at the top of your game, but all of a sudden, it's dark. Yes, but the Lord Jesus, according to the Bible in, in Matthew 27, 51 through 53, the Bible says, uh, and it talks about how uh, Jesus uh, uh, said these words, it is finish. As he died on the cross, immediately the curtains of the sanctuary of the temple were torn and a great earthquake occurred. Rocks were broken. <laughs> Listen at this. And many dead saints were resurrected from their tomb. Now there are a couple of things you need to see. And the Bible says that he gave up the ghost. What hit my brain? Number one, when he said it is finished. See, a lot of times we are struggling and wrestling with the moment that God has set up. But Jesus turned it loose and said, I'm done. I'm going to stop fighting this. <laughs> I'm going to stop fighting against this. I'm, I'm done. And the Bible says that suddenly an earthquake. You want things to uh, uh, shake loose out of your life. To, you want to be freed. You want to be liberated. 
And you might say, but how can I praise God when I'm in prison? How can I praise God when I'm confused? How can I praise God when my rent is due and I don't have the money? How can I praise God when things are going uh, um, opposite of what I had expected? How can I praise God? Well, what? That is the formula. That is the process. That is the thing you need to do to uh, cause a release of energy in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Oh God, oh God, I can remember when I was driving around last weekend. Watch this, watch this. I, I, I began to praise God and, and hallelujah and, and, and shout glory and just Thank you, Jesus. I even remember putting my hands up, waving my hands while driving through the city of Los Angeles. I, re I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. And, and then what happened was something starts stirring on the inside. Mm -hmm. Ah, There was an awakening. Do you hear me tonight? This morning, this afternoon, there was an awakening of an energy, a power, watch this, that was already on the inside. Mm -hmm. God didn't have to put it inside me. I came here with it. Mm -hmm. But prayer, watch this, and praise mm -hmm, awakened inside of me uh -huh, a power, an energy uh, that will cause the earth to quake, mm -hmm, that would cause prison doors to come open. Mm -hmm. Yes, now watch this, the reverse of it or the opposite of praising or and worshiping and or singing praises and praying is murmuring and complaining. And what that does, it stifles the power of God. It, it stifles, it shuts down the power of God. It caps the power. It limits the, the power of God. Uh, it prevents, if you will, the power of God from moving and shaking things on your behalf. Ah, because you rather murmur and complain than to give God praise. You would rather accuse your brethren than to give God praise. Ah, you would rather accuse God than to realize that he set you up for something awesome and something amazing. Instead of uh, singing praises, we get on the phone and we start chattering it up and chopping it up and talking about people. And what you do is the thing that will um, release you from bondage, or if you will, the thing that will release you and set you free and the thing that would shake up things in your life that need to be shaken, the thing that would awaken the power of God inside of you. Oh my God, you have, because you murmur and complain, you have capped off a reservoir, an endless reservoir, an endless stream of power and energy, watch this, that can only be released through prayer and praise. Mm. It's the only thing. It's the only thing. It's the it's it's the only thing. It's the only thing. It's it's the only thing. Praise and worship. That's why the Bible says, "In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you." Well, Bishop, I don't know what to do in the midst of my trial. Praise God. Well, what about uh, the fact that they're lying on me uh, on the job? Give God praise. And, ah, I praise God tonight. I praise him. I praise him. Well, God, what about uh, the bank? They shut down all of my accounts. Watch, let me help you right quick. Yes, I promise. And I believe that if you begin to praise God, listen to me well. I believe that as you begin to praise God and magnify God, mm -hmm, I, be I believe that as you uh, uh, begin to praise God and magnify God, I believe that even in the midst of your dire situation, that as you begin to praise God and magnify God, I believe that in the middle of your brokenness and in the middle of poverty and in the middle of you being sick and afflicted, I believe that as you begin to praise God and magnify God and worship God, that, that spirit, that anointing, that power, that energy, listen to me well, that's on the inside will begin to awaken. Mm -hmm. 
listen to me well, and with it, mm -hmm, with it will come ideas and suggestions and witty inventions mm -hmm, on how you can begin to generate wealth. Mm -hmm. I, I, see, in the past, we've gotten stuck with just praising God and thinking everything is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. But what praising does and worshiping does and praying does, it stirs up the power of God, the, the, the energy of God, uh, the, the uh, anointing of God that is already on the inside. And in that stirring, in that awakening, God can reveal to your mind witty inventions on how to get yourself out of the situation that you're in. Ah, I'm preaching real good. Yes. So if you want to, ah, to move to the next level, if you want a miracle, if you need a breakthrough, if you need a manifestation, I challenge you, I dare you to begin to praise and magnify God. Because in the midst of you praising God, in the midst of you worshiping God, <laughs> all that energy, that power, God, you're, you're, you're now positioned, if you will, praise and worship has now positioned you to the right frequency. I'm preaching good. I'm preaching good to the right frequency so that you can now receive from God what you need in order to move forward. I hope you hear me tonight. I hope you hear to me tonight. Yeah, mumbling and complaining will shut the voice of God. Uh-huh. If you come to me and you want some help, and all you can do is complain and, and, and murmur and complain and fuss and argue. And I'm trying to tell you uh, some things you can do to make your life better. And all you want to do is argue and complain and fuss and complain and argue and complain and challenge and argue and complain and argue and complain and complain and complain and be critical and be uh, 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 critical and more critical. And you're just, you're just not hearing. Then guess what? I'm going to sit there and just shake my head. And agree with everything that you're saying because I'm clear that you don't have an ear to hear. And so I'm going to shut my mouth until you are ready to hear from God. And I believe God does the same thing. While you're murmuring and complaining, fussing and arguing, <laughs> instead of praising and giving God praise. I will, God will shut his mouth. But the moment you begin to praise God, the moment you begin to worship, in the midst of your situation, you open yourself, you release an anointing, you release, you awaken the power of God that's on the inside. And in the midst of you worshiping and praising God, the answer to your question can now manifest. It can now manifest. It can now manifest. It can rise to the top and it can become conscious now. You can become conscious of it so that now you can begin to move in a different, in a different realm. Ah, because the power, remember we talked about the epic center, it starts in you. So when you find yourself in a precarious situation, Reverend Hughes, where everything seems to be going wrong, uh, Minister Designate Smith, uh, Kia, Minister, uh, Pastor Designate Gates, when everything seems to be going wrong, that's when you should open your mouth, hold your head back, square your shoulders, and give God some praise. Mm -hmm. Ah, praise and worship and more praise and worship and more praise and more worship and more praise. I see the tendency is and the temptation is to complain. The temptation is to murmur. The temptation, watch this, is to point your finger at somebody else when the fact of the matter is that God has just set you up and if you understand how God works and if you can tie into what God is doing and if you can take your cue from Paul and Silas and just begin to praise God no matter what 
Ah, I believe your prison doors will fly open. I believe that suddenly, ah, the foundation, ah, the prisons, prison doors will shake and the doors will immediately, watch this, spring open. Opportunities will, e will immediately present themselves. Uh -huh. Opportunities, the door that you've been waiting to open will open. The doors of opportunity that opportunities that you've been waiting for will suddenly spring open. But the key tonight, my brothers and my sisters, the key is praise and worship. The, the, the keys is to sing praise. Ah, yes. So the next time you go through something and you recognize, you, you recognize, oh my God, this, this is an interesting situation though. The walls are caving in. I want you to remember Paul and Titus and do what they did and begin to praise God and begin to magnify God and watch ah, the hand of God. You don't have to do anything else. Watch the hand of God begin to move things and begin to shift things and begin to set things in order as you praise and as you work, worship, as you praise and as you worship. There is an awakening of a power. There's an awakening of a power. That's why, again, the Bible says in everything. Give thanks. He didn't say thank him for what was happening. But he said in the situation, in everything, give thanks. Ah, but I promise you one day you'll look back and say, God, I thank you that that happened. Because had God not set you up the way he set you up, you wouldn't have praised him like you had lost your mind. And if you hadn't praised him like you had lost your mind, then the energy, the power of God would not have awakening <laughs> and things around you would not have changed. Mm -hmm. Oh, bless his name, bless his name, bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. So when you find yourself uh -huh, in a precarious situation, begin to praise God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. My situation last week as I began to praise God, yes, things started shifting. Mm -hmm. Things started to move. Uh -huh. Things started to awaken. Uh -huh. Watch this, watch this. I, I, I received answers to my dilemma. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was in, my back was against the wall and I did not know what to do, Minister Sandra. And my praise produced a solution to my problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, as I began to praise God, it produced the solution to my problem. I'm going to say it one more time. As I began to praise God, it didn't change how I felt. I still felt bad. But as I began to press beyond how I felt and implemented the principle of praise, as I praised God, mm -hmm, it produced uh huh. The answer or the solution to my problem, uh -huh. and I immediately activated that that solution, and it solved my problem. Oh, bless His name! So praise Him, praise Him, and everything. Give thanks. Yes, with prayer and thanksgiving, with let with prayer. And thanks and supplication. Thank you, Holy Spirit. With thanksgiving in your heart, let your request be made known unto God. How that's the language God understands. That you want to get God's attention. Think about it. He's on the edge of the seeable universe, on the other side of the known universe, and just on the other side of eternity. And we are 
13.5 billion light years away. If you want to get God's attention, how many of you all uh -huh, want to get God's attention? Mm -hmm. Yes, me too. If you want to get God's attention, mm -hmm, I dare you to praise him because that's the language that he understands. Because prayer and praise is positive energy. It's, it, it's positive vibration. It's positive. It, it means you're not looking at your circumstances. You're not looking at what's seen because you know it's just temporary. This too shall pass. And so you exercise a principle of praising God in spite of. And so when you can look beyond your circumstances and praise God uh, in spite of what's going on, you get God's attention. Watch this. And I believe that heaven that the universe is now ready to answer your call. Yes, yes, yes. Paul and Silas at midnight prayed and sung praises unto God. And as a result, it unleashed an energy. It awakened a force it summons a power that shook everything around them. So tonight I want to encourage you. I know it's easier to fuss. <laughs> I know it's easier to complain, Diane. I know it's easier and it feels better too. I know <laughs> I don't know about you, but when things are not going well, it just it just feels good to complain. That's the ego, that's the flesh. But when we decide to praise and to usher or to release a positive prayer of praise, then we unleash a power that will provide for us the answer to our problem. Ah, God, I thank you. I know you're going through. I feel you. I can feel the challenge. I can feel, I can feel. And most of us, when we're in this situation, because it's so dark and so lonely and so unexpected, I'm sure when Paul and Silas left home, they did not anticipate being thrown in prison. Uh, so it's, a lot of times it's unexpected. Uh, and we find ourselves in precarious situations. But the answer is prayer. The answer is praise. Because it's just setting you up to move you to worship, to move you to praise, so that out of that situation, out of that experience, can come the miracle working power of God. Maybe that's the only way. Uh, as I reflected on Jesus, he said it's finished. And he gave up the ghost. He, he just let it go. The Bible says, see, because for you to be able to praise in the middle of an impossible situation means you've let it go. It means you've let it go. And when you let it go, Thank you. Oh God, Handorobo Shaya. When you let it go, you release a power that is able to change your world suddenly. Hmm. I'm going to say it one more time. When you finally let it go, when you finally let it go, you unleash a power, an energy that will change your life forever. So I challenge you to let it go so that there can be an awakening of the power that God has given us 
power to become sons of God. That's how sons act. It doesn't matter. That's how heirs act. It doesn't matter what's going on around them. Watch this. My daddy going to fix it. So I'm happy. Because before there is a problem, before there was a problem, my father already worked it out. Hmm? Can I, I can't hear nobody. Before there was a problem, before there was a misunderstanding, before there was a situation, my father already worked it out. So there's nothing left for me to do, Diane, than to just give God some praise. Oh my God. Father, we thank you for this lesson, this informative instructional lesson so that when we find ourselves in a situation that's unfavorable as it appears to be I thank you that we'll recognize that we've been set up and that the only thing I need to do the only thing you and I need to do God in this season in that season in that moment is to open our mouths and allow praise and worship to come out of our mouths because why? Our Father has already taken care of it. Our Father has already worked it out. While I'm trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. And so Father, we thank you for it. We give you praise for it in the matchless name that's above every name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. You, if you're back, if I'm talking to you tonight, this morning, this afternoon, and your back is against the wall, it doesn't seem like you can, it, it seems like the moment you, um, uh, the moment, God bless you, God bless you, Leah, God bless you, God bless you, the moment um, you, you feel suffocated and like in a bad, the moment you find, you realize that that uh, that you're in this situation, immediately begin to praise God. Immediately recognize it for what it is. It's a setup, and all God, all the universe need for you is to just open your mouth and sing praise. Why? Because your Father has already worked it out. Mm. Oh God, I feel you tonight. I feel you. I feel you tonight. I feel you tonight. Hmm. Again, join me this week in just praising God. Just, just praising God. Just, just praising God. Just praising God. Just giving Him thanks. Just be thankful and bless His name. Just be thankful. If you only eat, have beans and rice for dinner tonight, be thankful for the beans and the rice. If, if you only have just enough gas to get to, to work, be thankful for the gas. And I promise you, as you begin to praise God and be thankful, he'll give you, he'll give you ideas, witty inventions that will help you financially, will help you emotionally, that will help you mentally, will help you physically. And I want to tell you something. I'm, I'm done. The answer is already inside of you. Prayer and praise is what causes the awakening so that that energy can begin to actively shift your life. Listen, God bless you. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for you. Reverend Yolanda Hughes, God bless you. I'm looking forward to breaking bread with you real soon. Uh, Minister Sandra, God bless you. Diane, thank God for you. Uh, Lakita, thank God for you. Tremisha, God bless you. Thank God for you. To all of you who are listening tonight, this morning, this afternoon, thank you for joining me. And thank you for making the adjustment from Wednesday to Thursday. So again, next week, join me Thursday at 7.01 for Thor Connect. 
Um, and again, um, certainly on Wednesday mornings, we are still doing our uh, 6 o'clock a.m. prayer. And then we're doing our 12 noon prayer. Uh, and I'm, it just hit my spirit this coming Wednesday. I may do prayer live on Facebook. I may I just kind of hit my spirit. We'll pray about it. Uh, but join me every Wednesday morning, 6 o'clock, uh, for prayer. We pray from 6 to 6.30 and then 12 noon uh, on Wednesdays. We pray from 12 to 12.15. And then uh, our... our uh, Thor Connect will be on Thursday night. So listen, God bless you. I thank God for you. Keep me in your prayers. I look forward to seeing you join me one Sunday when you're in Los Angeles at the Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Center, 4305 Degden Avenue Boulevard here in the city of Los Angeles. I love you. God bless you. Thank God for you. Have an awesome, awesome rest of the week. Have an amazing weekend. Give God praise and watch him do some miraculous things in your life. God bless you. Grace and peace.